Welcome to the Copper Spice YouTube channel and thanks for joining us. In this video, we are going to talk about the relationship between time complexity and algorithms. Time complexity. In our last video, A Guide to Maps, we compared the efficiency of various kinds of map containers, including the flat map in Copper Spice and the C standard library maps. One of the points we made was that a flat map, which is typically implemented using a vector, is a good choice when you have a small data set. For large data sets, it's better to use a map or a hash. So what were these evaluations based on? This is the question we're going to look at by explaining time complexity and how it relates to computer programming. When we understand which operations are faster or slower, and under what conditions, this knowledge provides the basis for making better choices in your program designs. The C++ standard library contains a group of functions, which are referred to as the algorithms library, or sometimes the standard algorithms. It is a collection of commonly used algorithms which were added by the standards committee. We discovered that some developers view these specific functions as the only algorithms in the C++ language. In computer science theory, an algorithm is defined as any piece of code or set of instructions which produces a result based on some input parameters. This means that every method in the standard library, like the size method in std string, or the erase method in std vector, is actually an algorithm. In addition, any code in your program which solves some problem is by definition an algorithm. Complexity is a broad term. There are both simple and recursive definitions in mathematics and computer science, which we found overwhelming. We chose the English definition for this word, something which is difficult to understand. The terms most often used in computer science under complexity are computational complexity and algorithmic complexity. It turns out these are also not easy to define. We observe that many people say these two terms mean the same thing, whereas we wanted to draw a distinction. Computational complexity deals with the properties of solving a given problem. It then asks the question, can we describe the optimal solution? Algorithmic complexity deals with looking at a specific implementation for a given problem. For anyone who works in the field of mathematical theories, this distinction will be important. As programmers, our focus is one level down. Under both computational complexity and algorithmic complexity, we can talk about time complexity and space complexity. What we find most useful is looking at the time complexity for a given algorithm. So what process is used to determine time complexity? Every time we write an algorithm, the first question is whether the algorithm is correct. There is no point in looking at complexity if we don't get the desired result. Once we are confident the algorithm is correct, we must look at the time it will take to complete. Although space complexity is important for some applications, that's not our main focus in this talk. Instead of measuring the time based on a clock, we count the number of steps the algorithm will require for a large amount of input. Typically, when people talk about time complexity of an algorithm, we are focused on the worst case input. For example, the worst case for some sort algorithms occurs when the input is already sorted. For a hash table, if you're doing an insert, the worst case scenario is when all the keys hash to the same bucket. In the early 1900s, mathematicians developed various notations as a way to represent how fast or slow a given algorithm is. And as a bit of history, the term algorithms has been around for a long time and was first coined in the 12th century. There are several different notations which can be used to represent time complexity. The most common notation starts with a capital letter O and is called big O notation, so it is not confused with the number zero, which is not actually a notation. 
At one point, some people thought the letter O stood for Omicron, which is also not correct. The big O notation is used to examine the worst case behavior of an algorithm. Other notations like little o, big omega, and big theta are used to describe measurements for the best case, average case, and so on. The main reasoning behind these notations is to look at the behavior of a function for very large inputs, hence the worst case. If you have a relatively small set of data, the time it takes for an algorithm to complete is usually not a huge concern. Since the big O notation is the most commonly used, this is the one C++ programmers should focus on. Almost every algorithm can be reduced to one of the time complexities listed in this table. There are algorithms with other time complexities, however they are uncommon. The rows in this table are arranged in order, so the best possible complexity is constant time. This notation indicates the algorithm takes a set amount of time, no matter how small or large the data set. Exponential time indicates the algorithm will take a very long time, even for small data sets. An example of exponential time complexity would be the algorithm to determine the best move in a game of chess. So whenever you can, select an algorithm which will have a running time as high up on this list as possible. For example, let's say you have a sequential container, like a vector, and you need to find a particular element. This process is linear and could be slow. If you can sort the container first, then the search can be done in logarithmic time, which is faster. We want to look a bit deeper into a few of the O notations. Constant time is the most desirable time complexity an algorithm can have. An example of a constant time algorithm is querying the current size of an STD string. The size of the string is stored as a data member of the string object. The time to read and return the value of a single data member is not dependent on the size of the container. When an algorithm has logarithmic time complexity, the number of steps will increase as the data set grows, but very slowly. As an example of logarithmic time complexity, let's say you have 100 elements in an STD map, and you want to do a find, which is implemented using a binary search. This will require seven different comparisons in the worst case. With 200 elements, it will take eight comparisons. The number of comparisons required will increase by one every time the data set doubles in size. If an algorithm has linear time complexity, the required time to complete the process varies in lockstep with the number of elements in the data set. One example from the standard library is the max element algorithm, which returns the largest element in a given range of elements. This algorithm needs to read every element in the range in order to find the one with the largest value. Since this algorithm is linear, if the amount of data in the range doubles, it will take twice as long for the algorithm to complete. When an algorithm takes quadratic time to execute, its running time will increase very quickly as the data set grows. If the data set doubles, the running time will increase by a factor of 4. Even fairly small data sets can cause very long run times. Many programmers are familiar with the bubble sort algorithm, which is often the first sort routine taught in computer science classes. It is a simple algorithm to understand. However, its worst case time complexity is quadratic, so it should never actually be used in production code. Here is an example of why time complexity can vary. Copying an unordered map has a quadratic worst case time complexity and an average case of linear, which is a huge difference. The worst case of quadratic complexity will only occur if there are a large number of hash collisions, which is very unlikely. 
Now you know something to look at when your unordered map copy is taking too long. When using containers and algorithms from a third-party library, pay attention and question if they meet the C++ standard time complexity requirements. In the Copper Spice library documentation for Q vector insert, we indicate the operation requires moving all the elements past the current index. We also document the time complexity is linear, since moving 100 elements will take 10 times as long as moving just 10 elements. Reading the documentation on CPP reference for STD vector is a bit more complicated. It sort of looks like they're saying the insert operation is the sum of constant time and linear time. What they're actually saying is moving all the elements from the insert position to the end of the container will take linear time, and doing the actual insert will take constant time. The constant time for the actual insert can be ignored, since for a large container, this part of the operation will not affect the overall complexity. So do you need to verify the time complexity in the hand-rolled container library you found on GitHub? Yes, you do if timing is something which will matter in your application. Our Copper Spice containers like QVector, QList, and QMap are implemented using classes from the C++ standard library. Knowing that a QList is based on an STD deck you can always look up the time complexity for operations in the standard and trust those guarantees will hold true for Copper Spice as well. Analyzing the time complexity in your application is critical when processing large amounts of data. Keep in mind, looking at time complexity is not actually about clock time. If you're measuring how many seconds a particular algorithm takes to execute, this is a benchmark, which may be of value. But looking at an algorithm and determining how it scales as the input size grows, this is a measurement of time complexity. Both time complexity and benchmarking are useful when working to improve the speed of your application. Once you have looked at the time complexity and chosen the best data structures and algorithms for your particular problem, then you move on to optimization and continue until the code reaches what you believe is the best performance possible. For more information about the Copper Spice project, please visit our website at www.copperspice.com. Thanks for watching. We hope you found the content of value. If you have any questions or feedback, feel free to leave a comment on this video or send us an email. Please make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and come back in a few weeks for our next video.